Right, previously I showed a video on how to build an interactive worksheet using a spreadsheet. Uh, and there was this little diagram about a titration involved in it. I thought, well, let's let's build another one of those that, that show how to uh, hack this bit of accountancy software to be a bit more visual. So we've got a, something like this, and we say, well, the capacity of our burette is going to be 50, uh, but maybe we only filled it up to five. You can see this diagram kind of adjust. And maybe the end point was 26. So it's actually started up here and it shot down to here when we got to the end. And the titer is always going to be 26 minus five. Okay, how do we build one of these? Uh, well, the short answer is, is that this thing behind here doing all the hard work is a stacked bar chart. And this here is uh, an image. So I'm going to create a new uh, sheet. You, know, you can see how this image is put together. It's just an outline. It's also transparent. Let's zoom in, get a good look at it. Um, so you can see the grid lines behind it. So what that is, is that's just layered on top of a stacked bar chart. So what we're going to need, well, let's just think about what we need to learn about titration before um, we process the data. Well, we'll need to use the capacity of the burette. Usually that's maybe about 50 centimeters cubed. Uh, we'll need starting point, starting point, starting point. Uh, let's say that was five. Usually like 99 times out of 100, people will fill it to zero, but you may as well consider that people don't. Uh, then we want the end point. Uh, maybe that's gonna be 25 centimeters cubed. And then we'll work out the titer. That's gonna be the difference between those two. Really straightforward stuff. And if I want, I'm gonna highlight all of those cells there and go to my cell styles and select input. Right, so now if someone wants to come along and fill those numbers in, they can. So we're gonna build a stacked bar chart, but what are we going to um, make that stacked bar chart in? We can't just highlight all of these and add in a graph that's not going to work like that. So we need to figure out um, kind of how much is remaining in the burette, how much was used, and well, the air at the top. So you don't need to, at this point, do the labeling because no one else is gonna see it. This is in the background, but it might be useful to keep an eye on it. So, well, the used is, well, we're gonna calculate this separately. It's gonna be the ending point minus the start point. That's how much was used. The air is obviously gonna be the, well, the start point, And then the remaining amount, uh, well, that's the capacity minus the, the end point, isn't it? So if we add all of those up, we realize it adds to 50. Okay, there are a couple of things uh, that we can actually now do to make this a little bit more flexible. So what if, I'm gonna set this um, end point to 20 for a moment. What if it was a smaller beer and it was 25? Right, so what we wanna do is try and get these numbers not as raw numbers, but as percentages. So in the first instance, I'm just gonna take all of that and divide it by uh, the capacity. So each of these, wrapping brackets around it, divide by the capacity. Don't need to wrap brackets around this one, but divide by capacity. Now that adds up to one. If I change the capacity back to 50, still adds up to one. Uh, that makes things a little bit neater, especially when we bring in a bar chart later, the axis is going to always be between zero and 100%, which is really uh, useful if we want to add this flexibility where we don't really know what the capacity is going to be in advance. We want to give your user that uh, flexibility. Now let's have a look again. Let's, let's, let's just go back and have a look at what happens as you fill this in. We go 50 is the capacity. The starting point is five. And what you might notice is that the amount used now becomes negative. Okay, that's not really brilliant, is it? We never at any point have a negative number here. So that will screw with any graph. So instead, we're gonna try and uh, get rid of this Kind of where it's going to subtract these two things together if that's blank. And you can do that with if statements, you can do it with all the fancy things, but what I'm going to do is use max, and then inside that max formula, 
just put in both of those. Now what that's going to do is it's going to find the largest of these values and subtract the starting point away from that. So if this is blank, the ending point's blank, it's going to count it as zero, so it's going to take five away from five. So there you go, at the very beginning, uh, the amount used is zero. So if our end point was in fact higher, well it's going to come out as being used as zero, isn't it? But if the ending point is a bit further down the burette, it calculates it correctly. Now, what else? Our remaining uh, is in fact, at this point, kind of incorrect as well, because this is going to add up to more than one. Great, so let's, let's rethink this from scratch. Well, we only need to know, well, what is the remaining actually? Uh, we don't really need to know anything about the capacity at this point. So actually, let's just do equals one, minus the amount used, minus the amount that's there. Ah, now it's always going to add up to the right amount. You get rid of that, the remaining amount is one, or 98% of it. You know, so it's now starting to work a bit better. It's given these values. And I'll just insert that bar graph now, just so you can see how that's going to work. So if we go to uh, insert the bar chart, uh, well, it hasn't quite worked because it hasn't stacked them. So we just go to switch row column, now they're all on top of each other. And I'll start getting rid of a couple of things just to tidy it up. So you can see it, make it a bit smaller. And you can kind of see what's going to happen here. If my starting point's a bit lower, that gray area is a bit smaller because that's going to be the air at the top. The ending point is a bit lower, then the amount remaining goes down and the titer gets larger. So what else do we need to do here? Well, one of the important things is I've got to go into this axis by double clicking it. And I'm just gonna make sure that the minimum is set to zero and the maximum is set to one. So as long as these big reset buttons appear, that's then locked in place. The last thing you wanna do is if you mess around with anything, that it starts rescaling this. Otherwise, it'll not work. This is part of the reason why you end up dividing by the capacity to make this actually kind of more of a percentage. So now, no matter what this is, or what order we start sticking things in, it's always going to be scaled correctly. So next thing, I'm going to just delete these axes, select them, hit the delete key, nothing really fancy. Uh, I'm going to make sure I've got an endpoint in here. Uh, and then it's all just a case of formatting. So this top one, I'm going to click the gray one, come to format, shape fill, no, no fill, get rid of any fill there. Uh, and the middle one, shape fill, uh, I'll go to texture and kind of more textures, um, pattern fill, this is the one. I usually just pick kind of a bubbly looking one, maybe bully wish. Maybe a lighter blue than that. And then just add an outline to it as well so I can see it. And the bottom one, well, that's the same blue as on that diagram, which I'll show you in a moment. So this is it. I'm just going to clear the outline from it. Uh, and another important point, I'm going to set the starting point as zero. So this is as tall as it gets. Looks Make it a bit thinner. Put it somewhere and then bring this to the front or copy and paste it to the right place. And then just kind of resize them to sit on top. So maybe I'll make this a little bit thinner. And there you go. If I remove, make sure I remove the outline from the, uh, the whole graph. Once I remove the grid lines, from Excel, there you go. It, now it looks like it's kind of in the place. So I just need to hand adjust that just a little bit. But now suddenly it's starting to look right. So change the capacity to 50. Oh, it's now it's emptied the burette completely. Let's move it a little bit wider. There you go. The endpoint is 25. You can see it's. Um, came halfway full. If the starting point was 10, 
you can see we kind of started a little bit earlier. Uh, so that that's it. So the main thing is there is you can probably delete these labels if you don't need them anymore. Maybe make the that white or hide the thing and then move that over the top of it, put it in the right place that you want. And there you go, you've got your titration simulator right there.